This is my brutally honest review of The Sims 4 Island Living. This is a part of a series where I review every single Sims 4 pack, including all of the older ones. Island Living introduces the world of Solani, which is a beach paradise. The pack centers around life living on an island, including becoming a conservationist, cleaning up beaches, and engaging with the local culture. Taking a look at the cast, there are tons of female hairstyles, most of which look really nice. Unfortunately, there's only four for male sims and a couple of them just look like the female ones remeshed. Most clothing suits the theme very very well. There are tons of swatches for each option. I appreciate a pack that sticks to a consistent theme and Island Living follows this coherent theme very well. The cast is meant for living on an island and nothing else and that's why I really like it. The pack comes with a lot of swimwear too which we are lacking in the game of general so that's really nice to see. Including a rather sultry looking scoop diving suit. <laughs> The cast feels suitable for a lot of different occasions and not just everyday wear. You can fill almost every category in cast, whether that's athletic, swimwear, or party wear with tons of style options suitable for the world. Kids and toddlers do get a small amount of stuff. I guess the best thing for toddlers is the armbands for swimming. Usually I have a few faults to find when looking through cast, but this pack doesn't really have that many faults. Of course, there is a male and female imbalance as there are in in basically every single Sims 4 pack, but it's not as prominent as some other packs. It's only really a minor issue and I feel like there's mostly enough stuff for male Sims 2. In Cass, you can choose two traits to select and an aspiration that are relating to beach life, although these don't have a significant impact on gameplay. In general though, I'd say this Cass is perfect for what it's meant for, which is living on an island. So we are starting off strong with a nine out of 10 for the Cass. So having a look at the build mode stuff, the main feature of the build mode that's brought into this pack is that you can build over water. Obviously, to make it look more natural, you'll need the stilt foundations. You can't build basements under the island living lots if it's on a beach. I would say the feature is actually really easy to use as long as you understand the fundamentals of the Sims 4 flooring system and you can create some really nice spaces. The pack comes with a sufficient amount of architecture to make a beach hut style house. It includes tons of really nice doors and windows including some really lovely open plan ones. The pack has a lot of plants and trees which also fit the world's theme perfectly. It contains some objects for most rooms but not every single room. The pack comes with no kitchen set. The whole gameplay point of this pack is about living off the grid so it would have been nice to include at least one barbecue other than just a fire pit. The pack doesn't contain much built mode assets especially when compared to other expansion packs but for what it's worth. The stuff in this pack is really nice. Most of the objects just serve basic functions like beds, sofas and tables but they all fit the theme very well. There's also quite a lot of nice stuff for community builds too. The pack comes with a swing which is a rare addition to most packs and also has a few floats for pools in the sea. For the more advanced builders the pack comes with a glass bottom panel which is really versatile for most modern builds. In general I'd say the build by stuff fits the theme very well and contains nice enough swatches to create a really good space easily. I really do wish there were some more house plants. I also wish there was some kitchen stuff and more decorative objects but in all I'd say the build stuff is really strong. So with that being said the build mode gets a 9 out of 10. Taking a look at the world it has three areas for a total of 14 lots. The first area is like a survival area and comes with three livable lots. One is a basic shack to live in and another is a secluded island. This is nice for the those who are wanting a more off the grid survival experience. By the way, off the grid lots have no electricity or water which leads to some interesting gameplay. There's also a third lot which is like the ultimate survival lot in a wrecked ship. There's also a secret cave here where you can go in and explore, although I'll go over that more in the gameplay section. There's a volcano here, although you can't really interact with it. The second area of the map is the main town and it contains a community beach. There are some nice areas around, although there's nothing to really interact 
interact with. I also noticed some random texture issues around the map, such as weird textures, awful shadowing and floating objects, which is a bit of a shame. The beaches have wild hens, but these are decorations and you cannot interact with them like the ones in Cottage Living. The area has a main town square too, which is used for experiencing certain events in the game. The next area is basically just a residential area. It's actually really, really big, but pretty basic. There are some random gameplay objects dotted around like swings and easels, but it doesn't have much substance. Unfortunately, as with most other Sims 4 worlds, there is literally nothing happening here. The world feels like a set dressing, and when you think you found something interesting, you hover over it and you find you can't interact with it. There are lots of nice places, but not really much to do. I would also say each area looks perhaps a bit too similar to each other, and I would have liked to have seen more defining features that make each area stand out other than just being another pretty island. The world is pretty, but also pretty underwhelming. Unfortunately, it is getting a 4 out of 10. Taking a look at the gameplay, so to start off, there's a boat and a jet ski. They don't really have any special interactions available other than a few jet ski tricks, but you can use them to travel across water. It seems cool, but you get used to them after about 5 seconds. Although it's convenient to use these objects to get from one place to another, there isn't really a reason to actually move from one place to another in the sea, so they're pretty useless and you'll probably never use them. The pack comes with a new fire pit for cooking, which is cool. You can cook unique recipes on this fire pit and they're described as feasts, perfect for off the grid gameplay and cooking as a group. The actual beach itself has some interactions. You can build sand sculptures and play in the sand. You can also beach comb to find different collectibles. The pack has beach towels, which you can relax on or nap on. And in the daytime, of course, sunbathe. Although if you have the seasons pack installed, sometimes it's too cloudy to sunbathe, which is a bit annoying. If you do sunbathe for too long, your sims do get sunburn. This just leads to a mootlet. There is a fishing trap object, aka the lazy way of catching fish. Although I couldn't get mine to work for some reason. If you see one of these in the water, is it a boy, a buoy, a bay? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> you can click on it and snorkel. There are two types, deep sea scuba diving and just snorkeling. Whilst heading there, my sim discovered some dolphins, although they didn't like me. You can communicate with them and after building up a relationship, you can also request they do tricks. It's a small feature, but it exists for those who want it. There are three part-time jobs, a fisherman, a lifeguard and a diving instructor. These are not active careers, but do have some active elements. There's also a main career being a conservationist. This career is all about cleaning up the island, especially the top island, the survival kind of island is quite polluted. It's a rabbit hole career mostly, which is a bit disappointing as it would have been a great life career choice. Although there are some tasks that you can do in your spare time. On a work day, you can choose to send them to work alone or work from home. I sent my sim to work on this occasion as I had a festival to go to. The island has festival events occurring at certain times. The island has the events usually going on in the main square although it's impossible to know when these are happening as there aren't pop-ups and they aren't marked on the calendar either. I only know when the events are happening because I googled it. I personally hate event pop-ups but I do wish they were on the calendar so that you could actually know when to go. The Sims 4 being a closed lot and closed world system means it's very unrealistic to expect players to travel to the lot every so often to check if there's an event or not so it doesn't really seem intuitive at all. I couldn't remember the name of the event I went to and the game doesn't tell you so it's anybody's guess. My sim ordered food from a stand and ate next to Molly Prescott aka the girl who was supposed to be at school in an American suburban mining town but ended up doing her homework on a school day on a random beach in Salani. Not immersion breaking at all. To be honest I wasn't really sure what to do here and I didn't find it enjoyable and it didn't offer any unique gameplay experience so I just burnt some money in the fire pit and then I left and that is my review of the festival. On the total opposite note of burning money in a fire, back to being a conservationist. <laughs> Today, I decided to work from home. My sim was tasked with researching conservation and cleaning up trash from the island. You can comb for trash from the beach, although my sim literally found a fish in the sand. <laughs> After cleaning up trash, I found myself near a waterfall from which I could collect samples for my job to raise performance, so I decided to give it a go. Whilst we're here, you can also shower nude in the waterfall. And yes, it is a new woohoo location if you would personally like to do so, although I wouldn't recommend woohooing in a waterfall 
I mean, I personally haven't done it, but I have in a shower, which is basically the same thing. And trust me, <laughs> it's not worth it. After leveling up in the conservationist career, you either have the choice to be an environmental manager or a marine biologist. When I was younger, I actually dreamed of being a marine biologist, hence why I chose that path. And after a while, you can actually record nature documentaries in either path, which is cool. It's a cool career and much better than most of the base game ones. Even if you haven't chose the career, you can still perform actions to help clean up the island, which will improve the pollution problem. You'll notice the top area of Solani has a lot of pollution, so regularly cleaning it will help to resolve the problem. It's nice to have the ability to change the island around you with your actions, and it makes gameplay feel more rewarding. Although it doesn't have a significant impact on gameplay or significant rewards, so it's not the most in-depth feature, but more so of a fun gimmick. On this island, there's also a secret cave which you can explore. You'll get pop-ups as you explore through and it raises your fitness skill, but again, it's not really that in depth. Diving is a rabbit hole experience and raises fitness skill. There are lots of collectibles to find underwater and in the sand, by the way. So if you enjoy collections, it's a good part of gameplay. You can also dive to take underwater photos, which raises your photography skill. My sim took a real photo you can hang on the wall. The pack also comes with odd jobs. These work kind of like the ones in Cottage Living if you've ever played that pack. They allow you to do little missions for a bit of cash. I chose one to comb the beach for trash. It's a nice way to get a bit of extra money for your teen sims, for example, in order to break up their time. I would always check these as they're an easy way of making some extra money. And if you have high school years, this will increase your entrepreneurial skill. Now, I know the main thing you care about is mermaids. Firstly, mermaids can be made in cast. They have a regular human form and a mermaid form. There's a total of four different fin types to choose from, including a variety of swatches, such as the algae BT slay fin. There isn't much to mermaid cast. And to be honest, I would have liked more. I just feel like there should have been more exclusive mermaid things to make it more unique. You can also become a mermaid by eating special mermaid kelp, which can be purchased from the points reward store or by befriending a dolphin to fetch it for you. Mermaids have a hydration instead of hygiene need. You can rehydrate by using your common sense, for example, drinking water or having a bath as you would expect. They can sleep in the water and call over dolphins to talk with them and perform some special actions. These all cost hydration. If you have seasons, you can change the weather with mermaid siren calls. You can use special lullabies that you can perform on other sims. However, there are only four and they only serve the purpose to remove certain emotional buffs. Mermaids can do a mermaid kiss, but it's not really that impactful on gameplay. They can also perform a special fishing law to make fishing easier. I'll be honest, mermaids are incredibly underwhelming. They have literally no depth at all. They could have been so much more, but are really just an aesthetic thing. If you like the idea of having a fin when you take a bath or go in water, then by all means, become a mermaid. But there's literally nothing else of substance to it. They are even more underwhelming than the alien occult. Mermaids would have greatly benefited from a skill tree system like the other main occults. They also could benefit from more interesting mermaid powers and perhaps a special mermaid grotto to visit. I know mermaids are a key selling point of this pack, but if I'm being brutally honest, they are the most underwhelming element of the pack. In all though, I will say the pack is underwhelming in its entirety, to be honest. I hate comparing The Sims 4 to The Sims 3, and I know you do too, but in The Sims 3 Island Paradise, we got houseboats that literally move through the water, being able to visit as a tourist and manage hotel resorts yourself. We got deep sea diving underwater, where you could actually explore underwater yourself. It came with Krakens. I just feel like The Sims 4 Island Living gives you a taste of what it's like to be on a beach paradise without giving you the full depth of intricate gameplay experience despite being an expansion pack. The gameplay has some nice gimmicks, but fundamentally, the gameplay is lacking a lot, especially considering its price. It's pretty basic and average. I didn't really feel engaged enough with the pack to go back to it. It's something to mess around with for maybe a couple of hours before getting bored of the gameplay and realizing it's the same old, same old. The gameplay is shallow. Unfortunately, it is getting a three out of 10. Taking a look at performance, as always, there was some performance lag whilst playing in the world. I have no mods installed when doing pack reviews and I always check my PC performance whilst playing and they were all fine. This is definitely a Sims 4 issue and was very prominent whilst playing this pack. Perhaps there was just too much going on in the world for the game to handle. To be honest, I don't know, but either way, it was very frustrating. There was a glitch where my Sim totally disappeared and when clicking on her to find her, it just took me randomly out to sea. 
so I had to use Cheats to teleport her back to mainland, but then she was stuck swimming in the sand. Mostly my experience was bug free, but the lag was quite disappointing. But it's not a specific pack issue, but more so a general Sims 4 issue, so I'm not holding it against a pack too much. For performance, it is getting an 8 out of 10. In terms of cross pack play, cleaning up the trash as a child or teen sim raises empathy with the parenthood pack. As I said before, if you own seasons, you can change the weather as a mermaid. Solani also has unique weather and sometimes it rains and there's thunderstorms. If you own the cats and dogs expansion pack, cats will act weirdly around mermaids. And of course, there are some clubs if you own the Sims 4 get together. The Sims 4 Island Living is quite an isolated pack in terms of cross pack features. This isn't an issue directly with the pack, but more so with the Sims 4's disjointed pack system. It would have been lovely to have a beach resort with an island spa and some island restaurants, but that's not really possible unless you own a variety of packs. The cross pack play was pretty bad. It's getting a three out of 10. So in terms of my personal opinion and overall conclusion of this pack, it gets a six out of 10 in all. The pack, as with almost every single Sims 4 pack, has incredibly lovely cast assets and building assets, but The Sims 4 is a game, not a 3D modeling program. The gameplay is lacking a lot, especially considering its price. It's a very pretty pack, but being pretty doesn't mean it's good gameplay. I honestly don't go into Sims 4 pack reviews looking to be negative, but the truth is the gameplay is lacking a lot of this pack. To be constructive to EA, the pack needed a resort system and better mermaids to make it feel more complete and engaging. There also should have been more in-depth gameplay relating to island conservation. If you found this review useful, you may want to check out my Brutally Honest Review playlist. I update it every single week. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.